The other battle that we've really been paying attention to is that cornerback two position and it to me looks like dane jackson is still running away with that job um we saw kair elam today he looked even more up and down than he looked in the first preseason game to me and you know we we kind of have the memory of the end of last year and he was he was playing well and and all that but he he's been grabby in coverage he got flagged today for pass interference um got beat a few times and i'm not i'm not expecting any of that to not happen um it's just kind of like the way this regime works like if all things are equal they're going to take the veteran that's been in the system that's been around in dane jackson um we've seen that over and over again um and as things stand right now, I think Dane Jackson's been playing at a higher level than him. And I, I don't want to sound too flip floppy here because I, I have been somebody that said, you know, we need to upgrade Dane Jackson. Um, and it, it's more of like this idea in my head of having like two first round picks and Trey White and insert player X and kind of just always rotating those players and having high end two cor two cornerbacks all the time and when one of them's kind of aging out you draft the next one you draft the next one um i love that idea on paper i still do i still stand by that as of right now i think we also have to kind of accept that dane jackson is a little bit better than <laughs> we like to give him credit for um, he's where he's supposed to be. He's a pretty sure tackler. Um, does he get beat up on? Yes. Um, anybody playing against Trey White's going to get targeted a lot. The NFL, you know, it's easier to uh, make plays on offense than on defense. The rules are kind of set up that way. Um, is Dane Jackson my ideal starter long-term answer? No, absolutely not. Um, but I, I think it's also okay it's not like the sky is falling right now that he's out playing Kyrie elam right now um he's still a player that's super young and um i heard joe marino talking about it going into the season he's like a year and a half younger than uh i believe it was dalton kincaid and osiris torrance and you know he's in his second year and they're just coming into the league i think he's only 22 years old right now um, so I, I don't think that, you know, if he gets beat out by Dane Jackson this year that, uh, well, he was, a, you know, that was a draft pick bust and blah, blah, blah. Um, I think it's not following the trajectory that we would like it to. Um, certainly not for myself. Um, you know, when you take a player in the first round, you're looking for them to be, you know, an instant starter impact starter. And I think that's something that I've kind of had to adjust for myself with. Um, I've kind of like with with the more success this team has in drafting in the late twenties. This isn't you know the top ten picks that we used to have every year. Of like you know even those guys are a crapshoot, but they're like these blue chip can't miss guys, right? Um, and we saw the Bills bring in all kinds of guys like that, and they were on a shitty team, so it didn't matter. Um, now we're drafting them into a situation where there are incumbent starters. You know, you have to earn that job. If you're not, if you're not earning it, we have a guy that was here last year that we'll just keep going with him until you earn it. Um, I, I still think Kyrie Elam has way more upside than Dane Jackson. Um, but as it stands right now, I'm just trying to kind of be be patient there. Um, we've seen a ton of players under this regime uh, really blossom in their third year. You think about a guy like uh, Dawson Knox, uh, Josh Allen, Tremaine Edmonds um, was kind of a third year breakout. Um, Ed Oliver kind of had his breakout in his third year. Um, it's just it's it's something I'm willing to give time and. If, if Dane Jackson ends up beating out Kyrie Elam, which I'm pretty confident is what's going to happen, 
um, it's still a long season. And, you know, that it kind of really shores up the depth that we have at that position. Um, you know, having three guys competing for that CB2 job, Benford in the mix as well. Uh, all three of those dudes could be a starting CB2 somewhere else. And we have that amount of depth uh, on the team. So, you know, if injuries happen, I like what our depth looks like. And I also wouldn't rule out, you know, Dane Jackson starts the season. There's, you know, some platooning going on. I fully expect platooning happening, um, especially with McDermott. You know, they, they love keeping guys fresh and getting different looks and all that. And, you know, if Dane Jackson is the starter at CB2 week one, it doesn't mean that by, I don't know, week four, week six, um, Kyrie Elam's, it hits him. He, he's grasping it. He puts together, you know, his physical ability with what the team is expecting, his 111th. Doesn't mean that we couldn't see a positional shift at some point in the year where Kyrie Elam takes over the CB2 role. Um, I mean, the sky's not falling for me there, but as it stands right now, I I think that for me, I I feel like that position battles over at this point. I think it's Dane Jackson's job to lose, and going into the the third preseason game here, depending on you know what McDermott's plan is with the starters, I think we'll 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 know by then. We'll have you know his actions showing who the starter is going to be without them telling us. 